True Sound Studios is in your ears. Hey guys, welcome back to building the new True Sound Studios, which is my professional home studio. This actually once was my garage. So if you guys have followed the uh, True Sound Studios for a while, my previous home slash studio, it was a detached garage. That was the studio. This time it's actually an attached garage. Um, I think it's kind of better. I'm not really sure yet. Probably one of the bigger things that I have really spent a lot of time on is the soundproofing. Now both me and my wife work from home so I don't want her to be able to hear me in the studio because otherwise you know it would just be frustrating. She has a job where she's on the phone a lot and she really needs to focus and she doesn't need to hear you know music playing loud so the, the soundproofing part of this studio has been my number one thing that I've been trying to really pay attention to. So just to rewind for a second the last video we built the entire control room so framed out the control room walls and the ceiling around the other beam and had to put up all these LVLs. Um, fast forward to right now now the whole live room has been framed out. So this is about um, 14 it's about 14 15 feet um, from there all the way back here and it's about eight feet wide and the ceiling height in total after the drywall goes in and the, uh, and the floor comes up a little bit is going to be just a smidge shy of nine feet. So it's all been framed out the exact same way that the control room was. So like I had mentioned before in the other videos, uh, because this ceiling over here didn't have a big I-beam running through it, I was able to just do very traditional um, ceiling joists, two by sixes, it just straddles the walls and you know it was really much simpler than trying to frame out the ceiling in there. Um, so yeah, so now that this is done, I started adding things like um, some of the wiring, some of the power wiring for just the lighting that's going to be in here because if you guys have seen my studios in the past, there are a lot of lights. I like all the LED strips and really trying to create a really cool and good vibe um, while you're recording. So something I want to talk about is the room within a room design. So this is actually the control room wall and this is the live room wall. So I've still left this gap, this air gap in between these studs. So also to note that, you know, this is a totally separate structure and this is a totally separate structure. This is on its own rubber. This is on its own rubber. This has its own ceiling joists and so does this. So these really are like two totally detached things. So if a lot of impact noise happened on this, it wouldn't transfer to this structure. And that is the whole reason for doing this room within a room is trying to stop that sound from one space to the next. This is a three and a half inch stud. This is a three and a half inch stud with a two inch gap in the middle. Now they recommend one inch to be a very minimum between these two studs. So I did two because it is recommended. And as you can see here, we have an actual nine inch gap because the drywall would go here and then drywall would go here. So we have nine full inches in between here. So because it is two separate structures, there's also two separate headers for these doorways. So this is one doorway and this is another. And I will connect the two using, I think what I'm gonna use is mass loaded vinyl. Um, and I'm gonna use that because I don't think that'll transfer the mechanical vibration from one set of studs to the next. Um, I'm not actually really sure about that yet, but I'll let you guys know whatever I decide or whatever is right. Additionally, because you have two separate doorways, obviously the doors can't like open into each other. One has to open up into this space. The other has to open up into this space. I will need two doors to just be able to get into this live room. So if you look at the floor detail of these two doorways, you can see we have one set of studs and then I filled it in with some oak just to kind of close up this gap a little bit more and then continue here because when I actually run my flooring, my flooring will actually have to stop. There will be a physical break. I will stop the flooring here and then restart it right here so that that, that noise, that mechanical vibration won't transfer from the one uh, set of studs to the next. And I will probably just fill in this void with some sort of foam, maybe just some of that 
typical uh, studio foam. And that would be only to literally just fill in this gap. So there isn't actually, <laughs> you know, uh, a void in, in here. Now you definitely don't want to fill this in, you know, with wood because then you're attaching your two structures together and that's pointless and you know fiberglass installation you know you don't want those fibers everywhere and the only thing I can think of is just some standard foam and I think that is probably what I'll end up doing. Okay so I'm going to start running this snake cable that I showed you guys in the other video uh, through the wall so we can prepare for drywall and obviously these already have the ends soldered on to them I'm not going to cut them off you know it's just more work so I'm going to I need to protect them because you know I am afraid that they're going to get damaged through this whole process so I'm going to wrap them up in some bubble wrap like this and then make sure that we fold the ends over so we don't get any dust and dirt in there And then just kind of leave it like that. Now I might throw like a plastic bag over this additionally, but I think this will be pretty good. And then I'll just tape this all together so that when I fish this through all the walls, it's not gonna get destroyed. So I finally decided where to put the XLR connections in the live room and it's gonna be right in the middle of this wall. So I need to run the snake cable all the way down that wall, down here through here, over to here, and it's essentially gonna end up right where that insulation is, and that will be where the mixing console is. Okay, so my first idea to hang the cables on the wall was to use these kind of like hooks. Um, they're just like utility hooks, and I would just kind of like, you know, put all the cables as I'm working on here, and then maybe in the end secure them somehow. And the reason I have to do that is because that's actually, as you can see, this is on the outer wall. Um, the cables actually are gonna, are coming from the inner walls. So the problem with this is I'm going from cables on the inner wall, transfer them to the outer wall, and then eventually wherever they end up, they have to come back to the inner wall. Okay, so though that other idea isn't terrible, I think this would just work out better. So what I did is I just drilled small little holes. And what I'm gonna use is, I gotta have a piece of wire here. I might also use uh, zip ties. And all I'm gonna do is just kinda like make little little hoops um, to be able to put the wire in. And then this way they're kinda like freely hanging on here, um, which might be beneficial in the end, especially if I need to take things in and out. Um, and then this way I also don't have to drill holes through my studs, which isn't a terrible thing, but when I go to put my fiberglass insulation on here, you know, every cable that you run through one of these studs is something that you technically should cut around. So it just means more work. And I just think this way, there's a bunch of dead space between these two walls and this I think just will work out good. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the cabling. So I am inside the live room and all these cables are coming from the control room. So. This just might help you guys out, you know, if you're building your own studio, just some ideas. So, first of all, there's gonna be an XLR jack in that like closet area. So, you know, just in case I end up putting a guitar amp in there or something, at least there is a connection to hook something up to. This is just your standard guitar cable, instrument cable. So if I wanted to plug like a guitar in the control room and run a combo amp out in the live room, I could. This is like the main snake cable. This has eight channels of mic connections for it. So we have eight channels right here. This is my room mic. So in video number two, um, I was showing you guys, I have that super long L-shaped hallway. Well, in the very back mud room, there is two microphone connections so that I can create my own like reverb chamber. And that's what these two mic ties are for. This big, this is actually Cat5 cable, but it has four pairs of wire in there, which is eight wires. And this is for my mic movers. Um, if you guys want to check that out, I built some mic movers that literally uh, move the microphones around uh, controlled from the control room so that it's kind of like having an assistant. Um, this is for an extra camera. For those mic movers, sometimes I want to visually see where those mic movers are actually moving the microphone. And this is to be able to hook up a camera to be able to see it. Here's some two pretty heavy duty speaker cables and these will be for uh, guitar or bass amps. So that you can put the guitar or bass amp 
itself in the control room and then put the cabinet out in the live room. And last, I have something called a BPM helper. It just is like an arrow um, to go faster or slower. And it's really just to help out drummers. Um, I'm sure I'll make a video of that one day. And then actual last thing is just a straight up headphone mix um, from the control room so that, you know, I could send yet another headphone send out into the uh, live room. So just really quick, um, I showed you guys all the cables in the live room, but this is where they correspond on the different wall plate. So in the live room, in the like vocal area, we have two uh, mic inputs and then a headphone out and then also a talk back out. And then in the control room, once again, two more microphone inputs, headphone out and talk back out. So essentially these are just exactly the same. In the live room, this is like the main panel though. So we have eight XLR um, mic inputs um, over here. And then we have the two room mics that are in my mud room to kind of create my own reverb sound. That'll be right here. Then there'll be, um, this connection will be the XLR connection that's gonna be in that storage bathroom area. And then also the straight up guitar cable that's running through there. Um, this will be mic mover number one, mic mover number two, and then the two guitar speaker cables. And then over here off to the side, I'm just gonna drill another hole just to run another headphone out. And then over here to the left, once again, I'm gonna have to drill a couple holes. Not really sure I'm gonna mount all these, but this will be for the camera and the power for the camera and then for that BPM helper for drummers. So all, obviously all those connections are right here. That's the, like the bathroom area I was telling you about. And then directly on the other side, this is another set of four XLRs. This is gonna be like my vocal tracking area. So because I have four of them, um, one's gonna be for the main microphone, the other will be for um, a backup mic, like a, for backup vocals. Um, one will be for the straight headphone mix, and the other will be a talkback channel. And um, I think I'm gonna go over how I'm gonna route talkback and the audio in this studio because I thought of a pretty good idea. But that will probably be for another video at some point soon. So another thing that I did is I, I finally, I actually used this like framed out beam area as a cable chaseway. And you can see at the other end of the room there, that white cables. Um, there's three cables, there's a Cat5 and two speaker cables. So those three cables are, the two of them are just straight up speaker cables and that'll run to the rear speakers in the back of the studio, which will be, you know, playback speakers, uh, just some different types of speakers hooked up. And then also it's gonna be the rear speakers um, for my home theater system because I think I'm gonna still watch movies in here I mean it'll be a, an amazing sound system might as well and then that last cat 5 cable is I don't have any use for it right now but who knows six months from now I could decide that I want to put a blah 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 back there and at least I had ran a cable okay and last uh, we're back out in the control room now and these are all of the snake cable ends so this is actually eight channels of XLR um, male ends. So these are staying, which is why they're all wrapped up and protected. These though are the female, and these will have to get changed over to um, male XLR. But um, you know, this is essentially 16 channels, and these uh, snake cables essentially run all throughout the live room, and even a couple of them in the back of the control room, just to make you know hooking things up nice and easy. So you guys might have noticed um, some of these brackets that I've made, and these are just temporary brackets. All this is doing is keeping these room within a room structures just level and plumb um, before I have the chance to go ahead and put the drywall on. So right now, this is actually connecting this inner wall to the outer wall. And if I had left these in here, this would totally defeat the whole room within a room uh, design because I've just mechanically connected my inner room right to my outer room. So I made these really big so I remember to take them out before I drywall them. Which leads me to when I actually get the drywall on here, this will stop all this shear motion, this movement of any of this, these walls or this structure. So until the drywall goes in, these do need to stay up here. And there is quite a few of them so I'd 
need to really make sure that all these come out um, before all the drywall is up. So how do I say this? I do not know everything about studio design, about treating uh, an acoustic space like a r control room or a live room, and I do not know everything about soundproofing. This whole build, even to this day, I'm still learning new information, and sometimes I find things out probably a little later than I should, but essentially we are at the point where I can still go back and fix things if they are incorrect. Okay, so let me explain. Um, I just recently talked to John Brandt. He actually has a YouTube channel. I'll link that in the description of this video. And I was fortunate enough to be able to talk to him so he could answer some of these questions that I'm just a little bit unsure of. Number one, should I leave the drywall that is on the ceiling of the outer room in here? And John told me to 100% take that drywall down because it's going to be too close to my inner drywall and it's going to create some bad resonant frequencies that are going to cause a lot of issues in my mixing room. Number two, the rubber that is underneath the walls doesn't necessarily hurt anything, but it also doesn't make it any better. Probably the biggest disadvantage is it's a great way for sound to indirectly be able to get underneath that wall where the rubber isn't and be able to get to the outer walls and create soundproofing issues. And number three, the last thing is he was slightly concerned about how big my room is. Even though this room is still pretty big, it's considered to be like a medium sized room for a control room. And if we can make it even bigger, you can have more low energy fit into this room more easily and therefore creating a better sounding room in the end. So what does this all mean? Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take down all the ceiling joists that I put up. I'm gonna take down that drywall on the outer walls. I'm gonna pull all that down. I'm actually going to raise the overall wall and ceiling height by about six or seven inches. I'm gonna take out the rubber that is on the very bottom of the walls and that's gonna sit directly on the concrete. And by doing all this, I'm going to increase the overall cubic footage of the room, create some even better dimensions to have even less problems after it's all been drywalled and acoustically treated. It'll just be an overall better room. So I know what you guys are thinking and it's what my wife is thinking is that I'm crazy to go ahead and tear apart things that I've already built um, because I found out some information. And this is what I have to think about. You know, this is my full-time job. This is the last studio that I ever want to build. And I want it to be as perfect as possible. So by finding out this new information, yes, it is a little late. You know, it's a little late to show up to the party and say, hey, this is not perfect. But I haven't put any of the drywall up. It is possible to fix this stuff in a relatively short amount of time. I think to be able to do all this fixing is only gonna put me back about a day. A day in the long run is nothing. You know, I, I want to make the best studio possible so that I can make the best, you know, recordings and mixes and, you know, show you guys, you know, that to do things right sometimes means that you have to go back and fix things. and. I, I'm, I'm going to do this and in the next video you guys will see just very quickly of what I'm doing to fix all these small, uh, small medium sized issues that, you know, I've just recently found out about. So as always guys, you know, thanks for watching and uh, dealing with all this. You know, as much as you guys are learning, you know, I'm learning too and I just, I want to create the best thing that I possibly can and also make sure that I'm giving you guys the best information that I know. You know, I don't wanna lead anybody in the wrong direction and sure, I screwed up, but I'm gonna fix it and I'm gonna make the best studio that I possibly can. Okay, so I will see you guys in the next video. So thank you for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, click that like button and consider subscribing for more content. So not only do I make YouTube videos, but I also produce tracks and I can mix and master your music. So once again, thank you for watching this video. I'm Wiesna and True Sound Studios is in your ears.